And all of these ones, in this little handy apple peeler, these will be for applesauce. So these little apple peelers, I'm sure you can find them on Amazon. We've gone through quite a bit of them. And I have to say, if you're going to get one, go ahead and spend the money and get a good one. This is a one from Pampered Chef. Uh, we've had some cheaper ones, and the cheap ones really only last one season. Now, granted, we're processing about three to four bushels of apples a year, so it is going through a lot of apples, but this one has lasted a long time. This one was actually used, and we were able to get a really good price on it. A friend of mine found it for us. So, But this one really makes a big difference having good quality tools. And these strings are so thin and so perfect that none of the apple goes to waste. So I really do like this kitchen tool. You can see how thin that is. And all those strings will not go to waste. The apple skins, we like to make a sweet little snack out of them and I'll show you how we do that later. So everyone's helping. We're coring, we're peeling, we're chopping. Now I do leave the skins on my apples for applesauce. So you can see they're getting cored. I'm chopping them and I'm putting them in a pot. So applesauce has to be steamed. I steam the apples and then when the apples are soft, they will go into the blender. I leave the skins on because the skins are full of nutrition. Um, and we do have a Vitamix, so we can put them in there and put it on liquify and it will blend the skins and you don't even notice they're in there. There's no graininess, there's no texture to it. It just tastes like good applesauce and it still holds that nutrition. And that is what I want. We make a lot of applesauce. We don't have the space to have egg laying chickens or anything like that. So I will actually make extra applesauce because in the winter, the price of eggs at the store goes really, really high. And in my baking, which I always bake more in the winter, I can substitute applesauce. So it ends up coming out to be cheaper for me to just make more applesauce with apples that are in season. And they are so, so sweet. They are local. And I could not ask for anything better. The apples were wonderful this year. Applesauce can be water bath canned. You don't have to pressure can it. But we will do a lot of these pints. Now, I do almost all my applesauce in pints, even for baking. Um, usually for baking, it will call, because I usually double or triple my baking recipes, it will take about one pint for an egg substitute. Also, one pint is the exact amount my kids will finish once it's opened. So if I open up a quart, usually some has to get put back in the fridge. And if it gets pushed to the back, it's so sad to see something go to waste. So that is why I only can in pints, even though I'm canning so much. And you can see, you don't see any of the skins in there. It's just nice, smooth applesauce. And these are the reusable squeezies we use. So they have a little piece in there that can come out. And I love these things. They are really sturdy. You can completely turn them inside out to clean them. The whole thing comes apart. It's dishwasher safe. And I will put applesauce in there for my kiddos. Now this is the water from the apples after I steamed them. And I'm gonna take all the cores and I'll put them in here and I'm gonna steam the cores and any scraps that um, didn't make it into um, the apple cider vinegar. So we will steam all of these, and what I'm going to make is apple cider. We don't sweeten it. We don't add anything to it. It is just a really concentrated apple juice, I guess, and it's really, really delicious. And I will also be canning usually just a couple quarts of that, and it's just a nice sweet treat. Now here are our apple skins. Now I have cinnamon, and the little bits you see in my sugar are vanilla pieces. We make our own vanilla extract and vanilla syrups, and I will take just the end pieces of my vanilla beans, because you have to cut them open to make your extract. I'll take the ends and I'll throw them in my sugar canister, and it makes a really delicious vanilla sugar, especially for our coffee in the morning. But I'm gonna toss these apple um, strings with vanilla sugar, and a little bit of cinnamon. I do have Cylon cinnamon, which is a sweeter cinnamon. Other cinnamon makes my kids' bellies hurt, but this one does well for them. And I will just take them and wrap them around my fingers, and we will make little nests out of them, and then they go onto the dehydrator tray. And these take, because they are kind of bunched up, they do take about a day and a half to dry, because you wanna make sure they're fully dry. And they make little apple string nests, and they are so delicious. My kids absolutely love these. They are a big, big treat for us. And 
Also, the little bits of apple strings that kind of crisp off and flake off. When I make granola, I'll put the little crispy pieces in the granola. And it's a nice little burst of something something good and crunchy. And this year, my daughter wanted to take some of the crunchy pieces and put them just on her yogurt. And she really liked that. So nothing goes to waste. All the apple bits get used. <laughs> Everybody loves doing the little crank on the apple strings. So I will peel my apples for canning. These are going to be canning apples. They are peeled and cored and cut. And what I will do is five cups of apples in a bucket, and then I will layer a half a cup of sugar, then five cups more of apples, and then a half a cup of sugar, and I put a plate on top, kind of like you would for like if you're making coleslaw. And you would push that down, and all of it will secrete out, and you'll use those juices to can your apples with. And this is apple butter. I don't add any sugar to my apple butter. I do add a touch of molasses. Um, it gives good minerals to it. It gives good flavor to it. And then, of course, I put in some spices like nutmeg and allspice and things like that. But we don't have to put any sugar in it. And yes, that big roaster is in my bathroom. Because when you're doing a big thing like this, when all the crock pots are going with apple butter and the freeze dryer and everything, the kids kept tri tripping the breaker. So in my bathroom went the roaster. Something else we were making this week are big hoops for the garden. So brassicas where we live get eaten up by pests really, really easy. So I need to get my brassicas out into the garden, but I need to have them under insect netting and shade cloth because where we are, it is still hitting the 90s every couple of days. So we're taking nine inch, I'm sorry, nine gauge wire. We're measuring it out for how tall I wanted them. And then we are putting them into a PEX pipe and we're just measuring out the same and it's going to go and just stick into the garden and that's what my um, fabric insect netting will be on and my shade cloth on the same hoops. And that's really going to help me get my brassicas in and get them growing, make them nice and big for fall harvest and even through winter because I can use those hopes, hoops to put um, frost fabric on. And it's really, really cheap if you use 9-gauge wire. And you don't even have to do the PEX pipe. Just my wonderful husband likes to over-engineer things, and the PEX pipe got added. And it really, it helps it be sturdier, though. We are amending the garden. So we had an ant problem under our weed fabric, and it caused so much. They were overpopulated, and they were aerating the soil so much that it was air pruning my plant's roots, and it really affected our yield. So we will not be using the plastic in the garden this year. So we are amending from a local dairy. It has um, cow manure and chicken manure. It's right down the road from us. And when you're choosing a manure to amend with, keep in mind, sheep has the highest NPK. Beef cattle is next. Dairy cattle is, ne is the next one. And then um, chicken and horse is last. So here are some caterpillars. Now I plant a bunch of fennel every year and these are caterpillars I want. I want these, these are part of our ecosystem. They will only eat their host plant. So fennel, dill, or parsley. And I planted so much fennel that they would definitely prefer the fennel over the dill and parsley, but I had harvested all the dill and parsley I wanted. They don't get here till August. And this is the butterfly that lays the eggs. It is a blue black um, swallowtail so our state butterfly is a tiger swallow but these are blue uh, swallow tails and they're wonderful for the garden the caterpillars are wonderful we have three at home that were watch they're inside and we're letting the kids watch them and their chrysalis until they hatch so here are those apples those apples, see all the juice that came out of them? And I will just use that juice that's in the bucket to can them, and it's always the perfect amount, which is really nice. So I, the apples go in, and the juice goes in, and the amount of sugar to the juice is kind of like if you used a light syrup. Um, and we've got more going into the freeze dryer. My kids really like the freeze dried when they're really thin. But as far as the apples go, when you can them, they are so crispy when and like, they really hold a nice crunch if you can them in their own juices and I know I'm showing you very similar things but that's because this is how many days it took us to do this it took a good two or three days for us to do each bushel of apples and we were just kind of doing the same things over and over one batch in one batch out 
and that should be enough to last us until next time, next year. We plan on going back one more time just to get fresh apples, and hopefully we're going to get a little fridge to keep them in so we can have fresh apples for a year. But we went, when we go apple picking, we also go blackberry picking, and we made a really good jam. And here's more of our apples, more of our apples to be canned. And then, of course, we made apple pie, and somebody was stealing some little licks. We do a lot of apple pie filling as well, and for that, I couldn't share the recipe because I use um, someone else's recipe in, a, in Pomona's, Pomona's Pectin book. So because it's her recipe, you have to get her book, but I will link the book in the description, and it's really, really delicious, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> He was being so silly, but the pies were delicious. We made two pies, ate them so quickly we wanted to make two more the next day, and they were so good. So we have all the brassica babies under some insect netting on our porch, and we put a big shade cloth up over the top of the entire porch to keep them all cool, and it is much cooler. We used a 40% shade cloth. And it has helped a lot. It's helped them not feel, except for the spinach. The spinach still couldn't handle the, the heat. But everything else is doing really well. We're keeping them watered and keeping them cool. I do use two-inch pots for a lot of things. I like to give plants away. We have our snapdragons and our violas here. But I also, I really do prefer soil blocks. The only catch I'm finding with soil blocks, with us not having a greenhouse, is that when it rains, I have to bring them in because the rain would just destroy the block. And when I bring them in, they're not getting light. So I have like one big double door I can put them in front of where they get a little bit of light. But if it's, you know, raining for two or three days, they're not getting, they're not getting any sunshine. And that's not good for your starts. They get leggy that way. But they're doing really well. And we've been able to manage so far. Bringing the table in and out has definitely been trickier than we thought it would be. So next project is definitely a greenhouse. Now these are long-tailed skipper caterpillars and they turn into a butterfly. Um, they only attack bean plants. These are technically a pest, but they're one of those pests that just, they just don't cause that much damage. And the butterflies are fantastic pollinators. So if they were really messing with my beans so much that they were killing them, but usually one caterpillar won't even eat an, one entire leaf. So it's just a little bit of damage. And like I said, if anything's overpopulated, it causes a problem. But these are not, so I am going to just be part of the ecosystem. And I'm going to let them have the very few leaves that they end up eating. And everything else is looking good. We're getting beans off of these like crazy. And I'm just going to let them go. And I'll see if I can't get a picture of the grown-up butterfly. They're very fast, but they're beautiful. We also did not grow enough peppers this year so from a local farm we purchased bell peppers and jalapenos and I don't have any footage of the bell peppers between the bell peppers and the apples I just I just didn't quite set up the camera for every single thing we were so busy this week so we are making cowboy candy we will also be um, freeze drying some jalapenos and we'll make a jalapeno powder from some dehydrated ones but we like to re take the seeds and um, the membrane out of our jalapenos for our cowboy candy. We just don't like it that incredibly spicy. But you'll see, we are going to make a big batch. And because you do cook down your cowboy candy, it doesn't need that much. Um, I really didn't do that many jars, even though it seemed like so many jalapenos. So this is a bushel. That's a bushel box. And there was probably about 30 pounds of jalapenos in there. And whenever we do jalapenos, it's one of those times we do turn the TV on. I don't like my children in the kitchen when we're doing this. I like to have gloves on. And we just wipe everything down with soap and water and make sure everything's completely clean before they come back in the kitchen. Especially when I'm doing and blending anything. Because the powder, even just taking the lid off of the blender, it will get into the air and they can breathe it in. And it's just... It's almost like uh, pepper spray. It's, it's terrible. So I'm always very, very careful with our spicy peppers and how we do it. So when I make big batches of stuff like this, I will use my giant canning pot as a cooking pot. Because that is the only pot I had that I could actually hold this much. So we have tons of jalapenos all soaking in that brine. 
and then we had biochar. So I'm not going to talk too much about biochar. This is our first time making it, but it was pretty successful. We charged it in our own homemade compost tea that is made with our own compost. Biochar is one of those things you only do every couple years, but it's really good home for microbes in your garden. And we were able to put that in on top of some of the cow manure and get it worked into the soil surface. And it's one of those things that you can leave a little chunky and put it in there and it just makes a really carbonaceous, porous home for uh, beneficials. And that is definitely what we wanna do. So we are trying to get that all over the garden. And you can see even the compost tea that's still in it, we just kind of raked it into the soil and we realized we went a little thick with where we probably didn't need to. So we only did a probably half our garden with this and we probably could have done the entire thing with just that one tote. We weren't 100% sure, but I will link the description of MI Gardener's video. And that is what we followed to make the biochar. It was really cheap to make it home compared to if you had to buy it. Um, so I'll, I'll leave his, his video down in the description and you guys can watch that if you're interested in making your own biochar. And then it was time to plant peas. We had a week of thunderstorms coming our way and we are ready to plant our peas. So I have some little marvel peas. Green arrow is a shelling pea. And then of course these mammoth um, sugar sh or snow peas. And then we had some snap peas. So we are gonna get these all planted underneath our cattle panel. Planting seeds is probably one of my kids' favorite things to do. So we're gonna get them planted before the storm comes. And hopefully we will get good germination from everything. And I'm excited we have not had fresh peas since not even last year probably the year before we did not do good with our peas the year before so we are very excited to get these planted and get them going we have the majority of our uh, garden plant ready to be planted out next we're planting out our brassicas so we have our cauliflower and broccoli and cabbages but do you see why i like soil blocks so much that the roots are just perfect and soil blocks, because they air prune the roots, give me a little extra time if the garden is not ready. They can sit in a soil block longer than they can sit in a two inch pot without any negative effects. So we are going to get all these put out and spaced. And the one thing about these is they're kind of like tomatoes. They really need a good bit of space They because the bigger the plant, the bigger your harvest will be the bigger the plant of broccoli or cabbage or cauliflower, the bigger flower or head you will get. And that's the goal is to have a big flower or head. So you need the plant to get pretty big and, you know, a lot of nitrogen in the beginning. So we are so excited. We did not grow cabbage at all. Um, we've tried broccoli a couple times and it has not worked, but we have not had this good of a garden set up. So hopefully we have some good luck this year. We have enough knowledge to pull it off. And also, that's not how you plant a soil block. I was just checking my spacing. You still need to dig a hole and put the soil block into it. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure nobody thought that they could just place it on top. You still have to dig your hole and put your soil, soil block into it. But never go too far past the top of the soil block. all done there they're looking good they'll be happy to get watered in from the rain i'm not sure if you can see in the front but we still have fall tomatoes going so we replant our tomatoes in the fall and we replant our cucumbers in the fall and we get another harvest of that and here is the little nests after they're dehydrated you can see they're easy to handle they're delicious and crispy and my daughter asked me this year for easter we could put some chocolate or marshmallow in the bottom and put some little chocolate eggs or something. And I thought that was a great idea. So we are going to try some more experimentation with these this year, but they are just wonderful. I'm trying to keep one bag um, put up high away so the kids don't see them because they've gone through one bag already. They were so good. And then here's the cowboy candy that is ready to be jarred up. It's sat in its brine and we are going to get it jarred into jelly jars. And I think I ended up doing two pint jars just because I ran out of jelly jars. We have been doing quite a bit of hiking now that the weather's getting cooler. Everybody's really enjoying that. We have had a number of field trips too, kind of that we've been doing. 
My big girl is in fourth grade, and it is just a wonderful time to homeschool. We went to some old grits mills, and we got to see you know, the working water wheel, working grits mill. And we talked about stone ground and how that's different, and how it leaves the germ inside the corn, and how good that is for our body. And it was really a beautiful, beautiful um, field trip for we combine a lot of things when you homeschool, but this covered our history, our local geography, it covered home surroundings. It was just, it was wonderful. So they, all the kids had a good time. There was a great hiking trail and we even had a nice, he gave us a private tour of the whole thing. And it was nice to just have our family on the tour. We were able to ask more questions and we really got so much more out of it. Sometimes all you have to do is call and ask. And they did. We had a great time. We got to hike up the trail and see the top where the water is coming through the chute. And that was a lot of fun. And this is Haggood Mill in Pickens, South Carolina. It's really, really um, well kept and well done. And the trail was lovely. Everybody had a really good time and was excited. And we actually ended up staying there all day. We expected it to be just a morning thing. It's not super close to where we live. It is a good bit of a drive for us. But we ended up having such a good time, we stayed there all day. And come to find out, they have a blacksmithing and leathersmithing class for kids that my daughter said she was interested in. So we are going to try and work on finding a way for us to camp and her being able to do those immersion classes later on in the winter. And that is really exciting. You get to do so much cool stuff when you start exploring. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and my family. We love sharing what we do and how we do it. And I will be sure to get that garden tower up as soon as I can. We have lots of fall stuff and the garden looks totally different. And I can't wait to show it to you. Thanks for being here with us. We'll see you next time.